Hello, my name is Greg Leak. I'm a director of technical marketing on the SQL Server team. And I'm here today to talk to you and show you a little bit about Windows Azure SQL Database, formerly known as SQL Azure. And this is the relational database system uh, that's part of the Windows Azure platform for building apps that are data-driven apps that require a relational database engine. So one of the great things about the Windows Azure SQL Database technology is that it's based on SQL Server 2012. I mean, I want to take a minute here to explain how uh, Windows Azure SQL Database compares with SQL Server 2012 running in an on-premise environment. So when you're running SQL Server 2012 on-premise, um, it's an enterprise class database system, obviously, that has a scale-up strategy, which means you can uh, build a machine that's got more and more procs and more and more memory, more and more storage. You choose the hardware platform that you deploy on, and you're responsible, obviously, for purchasing that hardware, that infrastructure, setting it up in your network, uh, installing the SQL Server software and the operating system software on that machine, and maintaining that machine over time. Um, so you're deploying that server as a dedicated server, uh, either in your own data center or in a third-party data center. And typically, SQL Server, as a box product, in these on-premises environments are, is licensed on a per-processor or per-server basis. Uh, that's the database software. Now, if we compare that over on the right now to the Windows Azure platform running SQL Database, it's a strategy where you don't buy any infrastructure whatsoever. It's a distributed scale-out strategy. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, where you can scale a database out by partitioning it across many nodes up in the cloud. It completely abstracts the operating system and hardware management, so you don't have to do any installation of software. You don't even have to provision any virtual machines. There's no operating system to think about or file system to think about. And this is what we mean as platform as a service. It really manages all of that underlying software and hardware for you. And because it does this, it's really a very low friction provisioning uh, environment where it's very simple to provision a new database server and databases on that server up in the Windows Azure cloud. One really cool thing and important point about Windows Azure SQL Database is that every database you create has automatic uh, high availability built in. And this means uh, every database has multiple online hot replicas. So if any node, physical node in a data center goes down, you never lose your database connectivity from your application. Um, and this is a really key feature. So high availability is built into the system for every database you create, and we don't charge extra for that. Um, as far as pricing, instead of licensing the, the database software, you're just actually paying uh, uh, for the size of the database that you're using as long as it's active. And there's pay-as-you-go and commitment offers that are just based on the size of individual databases that you create, uh, from 100 megabytes all the way up to 150 gigabytes. Now, at the bottom here, I want you to notice something that's really important. Since SQL Database is based on SQL Server 2012, that means existing tools in existing code libraries and development frameworks just work with this database just as if it's an on-premise SQL Server database. And that's really key. Once you already know how to develop and manage and, and run SQL Server, you're already up and, and ready to go on SQL Database in the Windows Azure Cloud. So speaking uh, a little bit more uh, explicitly here on the replication strategy for high availability, when you provision a server uh, in the Windows Azure Cloud, you're actually provisioning a logical server. And automatically under the covers, within seconds, multiple physical servers are provisioned in the data center that you choose. Um, and those are one primary and then multiple online secondaries so that the high availability is there. Uh, if any physical node, something was happened to the hardware on one of the systems, within seconds uh, you would have failover to one of the replicas, which would then become your primary. So this high availability is a feature uh, that's built into SQL Database in the Windows Azure data centers. And if you run SQL Server 2012 on-premise, you could think of a corollary technology uh, being the always-on technology that's been built into SQL Server 2012. The difference is on uh, SQL Database in Windows Azure, you don't even have to set it up. It's all done for you automatically in the data center. Um, and you can see over on the right, when you provision uh, a logical server, 
you choose from one of the six Windows Azure data centers. And there's two in North America, two in Europe, and then two in Asia that you can choose where to place that server. Because of the high availability, we offer a 99.9% .9 database uptime service level agreement. So that's a commitment uh, to us being able to keep that high availability database always running. So what I'd like to show you now is how easy it is uh, using the Windows Azure management portal to provision a new database server in the Windows Azure uh, data centers. So here you can see that I'm signed into the uh, new Windows Azure management portal. And one of the nodes here on the left is the SQL database node. And that's where I'm going to provision and work with SQL databases that are going to be my backing data store for applications such as mobile applications or web applications, online transaction processing applications, or any type of application you might want to, to run up in the Windows Azure cloud. It's important to note that a Windows Azure SQL database can also be accessed securely from on-premises applications. So you actually don't have to host your, your web application or what have you, your, your middle tier logic in the Windows Azure cloud. You certainly can, but you can also actually just change your connection string uh, for an on-premises application and go right out over the internet over an encrypted channel to connect up to that same data store up in the Windows Azure Data Center just running the database uh, application or the data tier of the application itself. So you can see here I've got my SQL database node here highlighted and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select add in the management portal and I'm going to create a new database server and database. I'm going to choose the size of the database uh, I'll give it a name and I'll call it test DB and I'll choose it to be a 50 gigabyte maximum database this is just a maximum size if you choose 50 gigabyte database but your database is actually only one gigabyte you'll only be charged for that one gigabyte this is just an actual maximum size um, and then I'm going to choose a server but I'm actually going to create a new server so I'll say new database server and go on to step two now I'm going to give myself a system administrator login. So I'll type in my password and user ID. And then I'll choose the location where I want to host this database. Now you'll actually be able to choose from any of those six uh, locations, two in the US, two in Europe, and two in Asia. And at that point, I'm done. And we can see down below that my task is working down where I've highlighted and it's creating that logical server with all the replicas provisioning that in the data center and this happens in just a matter of really less than a minute and you're ready to go and start creating databases and applications against those databases at that point in time so we'll let this finish up doing its create process and there you can see it's done it's finished uh, provisioning that logical server and it's online replicas for high availability and I'm ready to start creating databases on that uh, on that server and working with the test database that it created in this single step. So now that I have that provisioned I can see that the name of the database is testdb and this is the server, the logical server it's provisioned. So I'm going to click on that server node and it's going to tell me that I've got a few options here to continue to configure and manage this server. So I'm just actually going to click here on manage server And this is going to launch the SQL database management portal. And I'll sign on with my admin credentials. And in this web-based portal, we'll be able to manage the database, including creating new tables, schema definitions, stored procedures, take a look at more of its query performance metrics, and the like. So a complete management portal built for DBAs, it's all web-based. So here's my test database, and of course I don't have any tables or anything yet designed into it. So let's go ahead and start designing this particular database. So I'll click on the design tab and add a new table. And I'll call this uh, my table one. And you can see here it's going to give me some default columns, so I'll just keep ID, column one, column two. I want you to notice here, though, that the data types are all the data types that you would expect with SQL Server 
2012. So again, it's a SQL Server 2012 engine that is running Windows Azure SQL Database. So I've got a couple of columns here. I'll make this field a uh, numeric field just to do something different. And I'll go ahead and save this table definition. I could add other tables, change data definitions, add keys, primary keys, and the like. I can also look at the data here. So I'll go to the Data tab. I don't have any data in, in this, uh, in this uh, table yet, but I could enter data right here in the grid view if I, cho if I chose to. I could add a row of data. So that's a very simple view at the uh, management portal. We'll come back to this a little bit later in the demo to show some more sophisticated features for this portal. So now that I've got a database server with high availability built in and a database created with some table definitions, um, I've got a fully functional relational database that I can program against with a cloud-based application. And what's cool about this database is I never have to do any patching of an operating system or any of the SQL Server software that's done in the data centers automatically without application or database downtime. I don't have to do any configuration. I don't have to even create any virtual machines as you saw. That's all done completely automatically as part of this platform as a service capability. Uh, you can use all your existing uh, SQL Server tools. That includes SQL Server Management Studio that you can connect up to and use against this Windows Azure SQL database. Uh, the new SQL Server data tools work great with SQL database in the cloud. Um, and I showed you a little bit of the web-based uh, SQL management portal. You can use your existing development frameworks and tools. And in terms of pricing, I mentioned at the outset, it's uh, pay-as-you-go or commitment offers that can go as low as $5 a month for a small database. Um, and even for larger databases, it's very, very economical. And then you can also easily do something very unique with uh, SQL Database, and that scale that database out across federations. And this allows you to take a single database and scale it across many physical nodes for greater scalability and being able to handle many, many more concurrent operations. And all of these nodes are both read and write capable. In terms of developing an application uh, for SQL Database, you develop it just as if it's an on-premises SQL Server, and all your code libraries will just work with this database. That could be ADO.NET. You might be doing C programming or C++ with o ODBC. You may be using Eclipse with Java and going through JDBC, including using some of the open source frameworks like Spring Framework and Hibernate on top of JDBC. Uh, you could be using PHP uh, as well. So all of these existing tools work with SQL Database. Uh, we have drivers that are released that support, same driver will support SQL Server 2012 on-premise and uh, the SQL Database up in the Windows Azure Cloud. So this is very, very important that your existing tools and knowledge as a database developer just carry right over to Windows Azure SQL Database. So let's take a look at uh, one unique tool here in a little demo, which is a new tool that we shipped with SQL Server 2012 that also works with SQL Database in the cloud, and this is called the SQL Server Data Tools. So here you'll notice um, SQL Server Data Tools integrate directly within Microsoft Visual Studio. I'm running Visual Studio 2010, um, and you can download these tools for free, and if you've got an existing installation of Visual Studio, They'll just integrate right into that existing installation. If you don't have Visual Studio, that's okay. It'll install the Visual Studio shell with the tools already embedded. And again, these tools are, are completely free, but they're designed for professional developers in DBAs to work with uh, databases that have more sophisticated schema and T-SQL behind them, uh, much like you would in a, in a database development environment set up for an on-premises enterprise application. So here within Visual Studio 2010, you'll see I'm connected up to my local laptop server, and I've got a SQL Server 2012 database running on my laptop uh, server, and it's got a couple of databases in it. What I'd like to do is show you how I could take an on-premise database and move that right up into SQL, uh, Windows Azure SQL database in the cloud. So I'm going to start with this Contoso Sales DB, but I'm going to show you that what I can do is I can add a connection to any server up in the cloud that I've provisioned with Windows Azure SQL Database. So here I'm going to go ahead and connect up to a server that I've provisioned uh, in one of our US data centers. And you can see I can expand this node for, these uh, for this database server in the cloud just as if it's an on-premise server. The tools work exactly the same. 
So here are the databases on that particular system. I could drill into the databases and look at their tables, stored procedures, and the like. But my goal here is I'm going to take an on-premise database and migrate it up into the cloud. So I'm going to start with this on-premise Contoso Sales DB and just show you a couple of things. I can open up any of these tables and I'll get a graphical table designer. So even with on-premises database, it's a great set of tools for doing T-SQL development, uh, schema development, stored procedures, and the like. And all these graphical editors make it very easy to change table definitions, add new tables, change data types, etc. And down here below, you can see the actual T-SQL definition for this table. So over on the left here, this uh, SQL Server Explorer is a connected view. And it will work with any SQL Server database from SQL Server 2005 to SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 to SQL Server 2012 and Windows Azure SQL Database. But what's really uh, powerful about these tools beyond the connected view is the ability to create a database project. So I'm going to take this on-premise database and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say create new Visual Studio project. I'm going to get a wizard here and I'm going to tell it to uh, just import the application scoped objects. I'm going to create a new solution, and I'll call this Demo Solution. There we go. Whoops. And very important, when I create this database project, I can directly add that project to source code control. So if I'm working with uh, Visual Studio Team Foundation Server, this integrates directly with source code control. And that means every aspect of my database, every object within a database schema will be added to source code control as a T-SQL artifact and locked down for team-based check-in, check-out development scenarios. So let's go ahead and uh, create my project. And you'll notice over here on the right, my solution is being created and the wizard is giving me a progress as that solution is built in. And here it's parsing the entire connected database, getting every object that I asked to be extracted which means all the stored procedures, the views, the tables, the indexes, optionally user logins, every object has now been imported into my project. And we can expand that. And we can see here are my stored procedures. Here are my tables. And here are my views. So if I was to open up, say, particularly maybe a stored procedure here, let's take a look at get product categories. And we can see here is this T SQL for that particular stored procedure. We'll take a look at another one. And we can see here the T-SQL editor is showing me my stored procedure. Now, what's really cool about database projects is that it brings T-SQL development, database development, up as a first class citizen within Visual Studio. So if you're accustomed to using VB.NET or C Sharp, you know about IntelliSense, refactoring support, um, and being able to go to definitions and find references to methods and objects. Well, all of that support is now integrated in for T-SQL. So for instance, you can see this uh, particular stored procedure is doing a select star from a view. If you're a DBA, you know you don't like select stars. You want to actually explicitly select the columns defined in that table. Notice if I hover over that star, IntelliSense will automatically tell me all of the uh, tables or all of the columns in that table uh, that are there. In fact, I can refactor that. I can just right click and I'll say refactor and expand wildcards, and it'll show me now what it's about to do. And I'll apply that change to this particular stored procedure. And now all of those table, uh, all those column definitions are spelled out instead of doing a select star. Now you'll notice it's also selecting from a view called V product orders. Where is that view definition? Well, just like in C Sharp or VB.NET, I can right click on any object name here and say, go to definition. And it's going to take me right to that view definition here in my project. Um, so there's the definition of the view. And in fact, let's go one step for further. This view is selecting from a table called product orders. And if I wanted to find everywhere product orders was referenced, I can just say, find all references. And down here, just like with C Sharp or VB method definitions, are every element in this database, every artifact, every table, view, stored procedure that references the product orders table. And to, for instance, here's a view. I'll just jump right back to the view by clicking on it. I'll click on another element. It'll take me right to that element and where that reference is. So some really uh, cool capabilities built into the uh, database tools that I just wanted, wanted to highlight here.
Okay, so I made a certain change there to my schema. What if I wanted to compare it to an older version of the schema? Well, what I can do is I can bring up a schema comparison tool. So I'm going to go up to the SQL menu, and I'm going to say schema compare, and start a new schema comparison. And I'm going to select the source as my project. And that's the project that I'm currently working on, the demo solution. And then over here, I'll select the target. And I've got an old version of this database, and that's called uh, the Contoso Sales DB1. So I'll choose that database and say OK. And now I'll hit the Compare button. And what it's going to be able to do is compare any two database schemas across each other and tell me every difference between those two databases across every element of the schema, tables, procedures, views, logins, etc. And here it's telling me that I've got some differences in these two schemas. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. If I was to expand this view editor up, we can see first of all there's a difference in this table. What is the difference in this table? Where my graphical view here shows me that in one I'm doing a select that has all of these elements in it, and in the other uh, original target database, I've got a difference here on this constraint. I don't have that constraint defined, and that's why it's highlighted. Likewise, I could look at differences in stored procedures. Remember, I expanded that wildcard in my uh, project to have all the column names instead of the select star. Well, in my original database schema, it's still doing the select star, so it's highlighting that difference here. If I wanted to update the two schemas, I could just hit the update button and this would take me through a process where I can make the target look like the source or the source look like the target and it'll automatically apply those changes or generate the T-SQL script that would bring them up to date. So some very powerful database tools that work equally well with on-premises SQL Server as well as Windows Azure SQL Database. So in fact, now that I've created a, a schema here and done some changes, I want to publish this on-premises database up to Windows Azure and make it a Windows Azure SQL database. So you can see I've logged into this particular SQL database and I've got some databases already defined up here in the Windows Azure Data Center. But I'm going to go ahead and right click on this uh, project, bring up its properties, and I'm going to retarget this from SQL Server 2012 to Windows Azure SQL Database. It still shows up as SQL Azure here as the name, but uh, the new name is SQL Database. So I'll choose to retarget this as a cloud database. And at this point, I can save that property and do a build. And if I rebuild this, uh, I can look at for any errors that I might get. You're going to notice that I have one error, and it's just telling me here that clustered indexes are required on tables for Windows Azure SQL Database. And this is just a best practice for performance. You always want to have an index on a relational database table for performance uh, query, uh, query performance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add that to this particular table. So I can do that here, or I can find that table definition, which is the product category table, which I'll go ahead and open up. And I can just simply mark uh, the category key as a primary key. So I'll set the primary key. And then I'll rebuild the solution. Now, you'll notice it's really cool here is that it knows immediately what T-SQL works with what edition of SQL. So it's going to tell me immediately for any edition all the way back to SQL Server 2005, whether I'm doing something legal or illegal before I've done any publish operations or anything of the like, right here within Visual Studio. So now that this is, uh, is building successfully without errors, I'm going to go ahead and right click and publish this up to my server. So I'll right click and choose Publish, edit my target, and I'm going to go to that SQL database in uh, the Windows Azure Data Center. And I'll type in my admin credentials. And I'll call it Azure SQL DB Contoso Sales. And just say OK. And click the Publish button. And what this is doing is taking my complete on-premise schema and publishing it now up to uh, Windows Azure as a SQL database in the cloud that I can now uh, develop against. And we'll look at my progress here. And you can see Publish completed successfully which means it should show up over here. I'll just refresh my view into the server. And indeed, 
we can see there it is. The Azure SQL DB Contoso sales database with all the tables, stores, and views, and views and stored procedures just as it came from my on-premises SQL Server database. So these are the SQL Server data tools. They work equally well with on-premises databases as well as with Windows Azure SQL database. Okay, the last feature that I want to talk about with SQL database, it's really unique to Windows Azure SQL database, is a feature called federation. And federation is a strategy that allows you to very easily take a single logical database and partition it across many physical nodes in the data center. Each of these nodes is a read and write capable node. And this is sometimes called database sharding. And the purpose of federation is to make it a very easy for you to create a logical database that can serve massive scale in terms of many, many, many thousands of concurrent users, concurrent queries, because the data is partitioned across these physical nodes. And federation is a feature built into SQL Database. You can engage tens or hundreds of nodes. In fact, you can go to as many as 500 physical nodes for a single database. Um, so that database might be a 10 gigabyte database across 500 nodes. So you can see that you're already getting up into databases in the, in, in the ter well over terabytes in size. Um, and in, in terms of the economics, administrators can repartition these databases based on the workload of the application. And the repartition operations are online, meaning there's no application downtime when you choose to uh, add more partitions to a given database. Um, both SQL Server Management Studio, as well as the online SQL database portal, uh, have support for managing federation. So the tooling's built in for working with federations. So it really gives you this multi-tenancy, great efficiencies. For instance, you could create um, a customer database that, that stores a certain subset of customers on, on different physical nodes, along with all their orders and their profile information. And then each node has its own dedicated uh, CPU, I.O., um, and network resources to service requests against that particular partition. So applications don't have to make uh, static decisions about their tenant placement. So this is a really handy feature that's going to get you massive scale as a backing database with this standard ADO.NET and JDBC programming on the middle tier. You just have to add uh, one real simple command which is you pass in your federation key from your application logic and automatically you'll be routed to the right node to grab the data for that particular partition. So let's just take a look real quickly in a demo of what a uh, federation looks like. So you can see here I'm uh, back in the uh, SQL database management portal, the web portal in this case, and I've got a, a server here where I've got a bunch of demo databases. And these are, these are arranged by the size of the database. If I scroll down though, you'll notice that this tells me here are the databases that I've defined federations on. And so if I was to choose one of these databases, let's choose the account DB database here, and click the summary view, it's going to show me over here that I've got a, a single federation defined, and that federation has eight members. I can go ahead and look at those members by clicking on this view, and here are the eight members, the eight partitions or shards for this particular database. So each of these nodes is a physical node in the data center servicing a subset of the data. And this is what allows you to do uh, really a nice elastic scaling of an application that may require a very, very high number of transactions per second, for example. And in this case, this database also, this summary view shows me how, many, uh, how much data is in each particular node. You can see two of these nodes have less data than, than some of the other two. Um, I can also do online repartitioning operations. I can do a split or a resize of any of the Federation members or nodes. Um, and so it's a really handy view. And from a programming standpoint, it's very simple to program against a federated database. So that's my, uh, that's my presentation in terms of the demo. And I want to thank you very much uh, for your time. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of Windows Azure SQL Database.